Well, hello, hello. Monday evening is here. I can't believe the weekend went by so fast. I got to babysit my two littlest cherubs, and it's kind of fun in their neighborhood. Santa comes by on a fire truck. There's actually one fire truck that's kind of the lead one, and then Santa comes on a fire truck that's got lights all over it and stuff, and the kids are just mesmerized by that. And um, we waited out there probably for at least a half an hour. My daughter was texting me from where they were because she had a friend who works for the fire department where they live and said, okay, it should be five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. But hey, we had a great time and then Monday came and it was work all day. And now I get to be here with y'all. So thanks for popping in. And I'm going to flip my camera around and we are going to get started. All righty. And I try not to make everybody seasick when I do this. So hopefully I am successful on that. All right. Let me turn that off so we don't have that glare. Well, how's everybody doing tonight? I hope you are doing very well. I don't have my laptop hooked up tonight, so I will answer any of your comments after we're done with the video. Um, yes, Diana, you are in the right place to comment. And Carol's here, and I know we've got some other friends as well. So, let me show you. Ta-da! Here is our project. This is actually a gift bag. And I don't know if you can see her on the back. I have done um, some tone on tone stamping for my bag. And I'm going to show you how every step along the way. And I think you're going to love this project. And stay with me near the end because I'm going to give you a recipe and show you a picture of what you can use to fill this bag. I mean, do you guys ever have last minute gifts that you need? Um, I think I showed you last week a gift card holder that you can make ahead of time and have a gift card for some local neighborhood business. So if you have a neighbor that drops by and gives you a gift and you think, ah, I don't have anything to give them. Well, that way you can give them a little gift card, but this is even cheaper because the recipe I'm gonna give you, you can probably make uh, four batches of this for less than 10 bucks. So anyway, let's get started. So the first thing that we need for this project is a piece of eight and a half by 11 real red cardstock. And I'm going to chop it in half at five and a half. We're going to put this one aside and then we're going to work with this one. Okay, now on my bag, I decided to stamp all over the front with this Evergreen Elegant stamp set. And the sentiment that I'm going to use is, it's friends like you that make this season so wonderful. And I'm also going to use... Uh, this tree and the Merry Christmas. So everything I'm doing is out of this one stamp set. Now, we are going to bring in my trusty Stamparatus. And I love using the Stamparatus for this project. And you are going to see why. So on the bag here... It's a little hard to see, again, because the tone on tone, but I have stamped all the way across this bag with this sentiment. Now, you could easily mount 
this image on a clear block and just stamp in your real red cardstock. But if you use your Stamparatus, it is going to be so much easier. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this image and I'm going to place it right here where I want it on my cardstock. Uh, right there. Then I'm going to bring in my real red. Let me move that for a minute. My real red um, ink pad. And then what I like to do when I'm inking it up just to make it be flat is I just stick another stamp pad underneath there. You can also use a Stampin' Spot if you like. Then you're just going to come down and you're going to stamp and then you are going to pick up this clear acrylic part and you're going to pop it down in the next hinge. Let me see if I can turn that so you can see right here. Then you're going to, it's a little hard to see it here on camera, but I slid my ink pad under here so when I'm stamping it's flat. And then I'm just going to stamp the same thing. Then I'm going to pick up and move my hinge to the next one. They're about an inch apart. And you're just going to keep doing that all up, lift, move it here, ink it up, stamp, lift, move it up, ink, stamp, all the way across. Then, once you get them all done, up on this, you're going to just move it to a different part of your bag. Now, if you want, you can do it in a straight line or you can just offset it. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to press down just to get that secure and I have a little bit of ink left on there. It's very light, you can't see it, but of course I want it darker so I'm going to ink up that stamp again and it's going to stamp in exactly the same place. Can you see that? So it's perfect. Now, through the magic of Facebook Live stamping, I actually have one that I stamped ahead of time. So you can see on this one, I offset it a little bit to where the um, second row is really like a row. It doesn't go diagonally this way. And then I just stamped part of my sentiment there. So it really doesn't matter how you want to do it, just however you like it. And if you, you'll notice this one is a little bit darker here. And this is a little bit lighter. Again, using that tone on tone, you can really experiment with that. Now, I'm also going to take my second um, piece that we cut in half, and I'm going to use the Merry Christmas stamp, which is, I've got it right under my tree just to save time I don't have to use more than one block so I'm going to ink that up and then I'm just going to stamp Merry Christmas right here on that second piece then we're done with that so now that I've gotten off some of that ink I'm just going to peel this off and set it aside so I just have my tree all right now I don't think I showed you on the original project. That was the front, and there is the Merry Christmas on the back. On the back. Okay, now the next thing we need to cut is our 
lunch sack. Now I have got a lunch, a white lunch sack, but of course there's brown ones too. Whichever one you like, you can use. And also if you don't want to use real red, let's say you want to use cherry cobbler, maybe you want to have it really bright and use poppy parade. Just pick whatever color you want. Maybe you want it to be blue. So you're going to take your lunch bag and you are going to cut it at six inches. So I'm using my trimmer here. There's my six inches. I don't need this top, so I'm going to just throw that away. Okay, now I have my two pieces here and we want to use our punch to stamp here. Now, there's two ways to do it. You can do each piece separately, like I'm going to show you. So there's one and of course it didn't stamp all the way, punch all the way out. Sometimes that happens. Well, gosh darn it. Let's see here. There we go. Okay, now you've got your piece out here. Let's say I hadn't come down all the way and maybe I wanted it a little closer to the top. If you wanted to get it exactly correct, then all you'd need to do is trace around it on your second piece. But since I know that I'm going to just pop that down all the way, then I can just do that and they're going to be even. So let me get the right way and then I'll show you. Okay, so see they're even Steven. Okay, now what we're going to do, we have got our bag. Now, I'm going to show you the boo-boo I made when I did the first one. I glued, I put my um, seal on the bag and I had the bag closed. So I got my seal all over the bottom. So all I did was I cut another piece of real red to put it on there and then it still worked. So see, you know, if you make an oops, there is no problem. You can fix that. So what we're going to do, we are going to put the front of the bag is going to be on like this. And I'm going to use my seal. Now you can use the other favorite glue that I like to use, the multi-purpose glue. You can use your um, Terran tape. You can use whatever adhesive you have. It really doesn't matter. All right, so let me come in here and sometimes the seal kind of sticks on your finger. So I'm going to just line up that bag right here. Okay, and then I'm going to pop that down here so I don't do the same thing that I did last night when I was making my sample and get it in the wrong place because then we just have to cut another piece and we don't need to do that tonight. All right, so we're going to just match that up. Okay, now we've got our little sack like this, but now we need our cute little decoration here on the front. And let me show you how I did that. So I pulled out my stitch rectangles and I'm using this, let me stick them here, this one. So it's the one, two, three, fourth largest for the um, forest foliage color. Then the next one is going to be my real red. And the last one is going to be 
the basic white like that so these dies i use these guys all the time they nest perfectly and then you end up with that great border so now you know which dies to use so i've die cut them ahead of time and i wanted to i don't know if you can see it on the original each one of my layers is done with stampin dimensionals i wanted the whole thing to pop so we are going to stamp first on our white piece here <clears throat> and i'm going to use this tree from that evergreen elegance that i showed you so let's open up our ink pad and we're just gonna get our stamp inked up and i'm gonna stamp it leaving a little room on the bottom and then a little room on the top and the reason is that i want to stamp the star on the top and you know what i kind of got that a little cattywampus let me come back in and try to do a little bit better job lining that up in the center well that's great Anne. <laughs> course for live there we go hey I did a pretty good job stamping that there now I'm going to take the little star that is also from the same set and I'm going to stamp that on the top and you know what I am going to do something here I'm going to grab another piece of white you know, sometimes we just get a little crazy when we're stamping. And even though this is live, I want to stamp the project perfectly. I do not want it to have that little halo and be off. So I'm going to run over here to my die cut machine and I'm going to grab this other piece and we're going to do that right over again. So thank you for bearing with me. I want it to be perfect. So we're going to come back in here and we're going to stamp this tree right here. Perfect. Now we're going to come in, make sure we don't have any excess ink. I'm going to stamp my little star right here. Wonderful. Now, the reason I left space at the bottom, I don't want this tree like it's in the air. So I'm going to come in with my Stampin' Blend and just put a little bit of ground underneath it okay just to make that look a little bit better now we're just going to take our dimensionals and I like to use one in every corner so we're going to have four pop those off come on there there we go then I'm going to stick that right on the top of my red, grab four more, stick them on the corner here. And if you like, some of my customers really like to put them all over. And so you could put another row right here. And of course, you're going to have this row all the way around kind of the border don't throw those away just chop them up and use them for your projects too no need to waste okay so now we've got that on here now of course we need some bling 
So these holiday rhinestones are what I've picked. And I'm just going to randomly grab a few and stick them on my project. I love these rhinestones. I think they are not able to order right now. I think there's some coming to the warehouse soon, but um, I don't know if you've heard of the new way that Stampin' Up! is doing their back orders. And when we get this project finished, I will tell you a little bit about that because I really think it's a good thing. All right, so here's our bag. Now we're gonna take these again these dimensionals, I don't know about you, but I love using dimensionals. Who else loves those things? When my daughter was in Girl Scouts, we used things for projects and they were called pop dots. Okay, last thing that we're gonna do is we are going to take our Evening Evergreen ribbon and then we would put our whatever we're going to put in here and we would just tie a little bow and if you notice I leave my ribbon on my spool when I'm tying the bow and here's why because when you are tying this bow let's say that you maybe tie it too big or too small and you need to cut some more well if you leave it on your roll then you'll be able to undo it do it again and you won't waste now this happens to be a perfect size for me so now I'm gonna just cut it off pull it a little bit and so it's tight and then I have not wasted any of my ribbon but if you cut it off to begin with and then make your bow you're going to have a big bunch of waste okay so now there's our two bags that we made so you get two um, you very easily I made these very quickly you make one bag out of your sheet of eight and a half by eleven cardstock then scraps to use your um stitch rectangles a little bit of ribbon these lunch bags are cheap my goodness you've not spent much at all now look here here is the awesome mix that you can put in this bag so i'm going to tell you and then i'm going to put it in the comments so you'll know so you use almond bark for this now I found it's easier if you use four bowls when you're making this because you the um, white chocolate almond bark comes with four, uh, 12 squares and you need three squares for each little bowl so you melt each portion in your microwave you want to stir it every 30 seconds then what you're going to mix together is an 18 ounce box of Chex Mix. I like corn or rice, a 20 ounce bag of mini pretzels, 18 to 20 cups of popcorn. Now you can pop your own, but why? You can buy it really cheaply at the store. You can get the skinny pop or something like that. And then the last thing you need is a large package of M&Ms. You're going to mix your dry stuff together, drizzle the chocolate over the top, and then stir well to coat everything. You want to work quickly so everything's coated because that chocolate sets up very quickly. You want to let it set for about an hour and then portion it out into containers you can use a container like this or the cute little container I showed you. And if you're going to use this, I would probably put it in a Ziploc bag and then put it inside of this. So what do you think? Is that a pretty easy peasy project? 
Okay, I'm going to flip my camera around so I can tell you a couple more things and just talk to you really quickly. So there we go. Let me get this positioned. Oh, I don't want to sit on my Stamparatas because there's still red ink on there. Okay, so if you have heard that Stampin' Up! is no longer going to do back orders, that is true. And let me tell you why that is. Um, with this global shipping situation, of course, I'm sure you've noticed delays in lots of things that you order. Stampin' Up! is no different. They've been doing their best to get products in. They've even air freighted things to their Riverton office, which adds a very big expense. And so far, they have not passed any of that on to us. But with the back order situation, people were waiting a long time for things they've ordered. So as of December 1st, what they've done is they've done away with back orders. So when you go to my website or if you're in one of my stamp clubs or you call me to place an order, only things that are available will show up for order. So what that means is there may be some things that are not available, but with the hundreds of items that we sell, um, and actually it's probably more like thousands when you consider all the individual things, there are lots of things that are available. Now, I'm just like you are, and I want all the new stuff when it comes out, but it's better, I think, if we can't order it, if it's not in the warehouse, because then when it is available, they will have plenty and you'll be able to order and you won't be waiting weeks for those products. So hopefully you see the positive in this as well. And if you've got any concerns with it at all, give me a jingle, leave me a comment, whatever. Now, here's the exciting news, and you are among the first to find out on my live tonight, unless you've spent the day on the internet just popping around. On Wednesday, which is December 8th, Stampin' Up! is going to offer free shipping on any $50 order um, that you place. You can call me with an order if you don't want to do it online. You can do it at my Stampin' Store, which is annbrown.stampinup.net. And the cool thing is there is a last chance um, bunch of products that are going to be retired and a lot of them are on sale. So if you want to get the biggest bang for your buck, get some of those last chance items that are available and get free shipping. Hey, that is just a bargain. So let me tell you also, if you don't get my current newsletter, if you go to my blog, stampmaven.com, you'll see up in the right-hand corner a little purple box. If you put your name and email in there, you'll get a free special tutorial, and then you'll get a series of emails that give you some fun information. And tomorrow in the morning, you will get an email that gives you all the scoop on that promotion as well. Alrighty, I think that's all I have for you tonight. I hope you enjoyed the project. Leave me a comment and I will post everything, the recording, as soon as I go around behind the back of my camera. The recording will post and then I will put all the measurements and everything in there. So if you have questions, feel free to leave them for me. See you next time. Bye-bye.